हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज रुद्री पाठक फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल टेक्नोलॉजी एल जी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फार्मेसी अहमदाबाद टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट फार्मास्यूटिकल बायोटेक्नोलॉजी बी फार्म सेमिस्टर फाइव एज यू ऑल नो बिकॉज ऑफ द करंट पेंडेमिक सिचुएशन वी आर स्टिल नॉट एबल टू रिज्यूम अवर क्लासेस एट द कैंपस दैट इज अ बिट सैड इज इट इट बट टिल दैट टाइम ड्यूरेशन our studies should not be hampered so to cope up with this loss we have begun with our online sessions by our youtube channel pharma ignite so i would like to request you all to kindly subscribe the youtube channel pharma ignite so that you don't miss out anything important which is going on let's begin with our journey of pharmaceutical biotechnology so what is pharmaceutical biotechnology and why it is there in b pharm semester 5 along with pharmaceutical microbiology now as we recall what all subjects of suitics we have learned so far first it is pharmaceutics that is we talked about various dosage forms which can be prepared that was in semester 1 then we shifted to pharmaceutical engineering in which we talked about the equipments which are going to help us in preparation of those dosage forms in semester 3 and in semester 4 we talked about physical pharmacy that is study of those physical aspects of api and excipients which helped us in preparation of those dosage forms now it is totally different scenario we are going to talk about pharmaceutical microbiology and pharmaceutical biotechnology together now what is pharmaceutical microbiology that is study of all the living microorganisms be it virus bacteria protozoa algae everything that is pharmaceutical microbiology how do they live on what they survive at what temperature they grow what kind of diseases they create everything that is pharmaceutical microbiology but in case of biotechnology we are going to make friends with those microorganisms and create something which is actually important for us so we can say it is a group of biology in which the biological systems that is the microorganisms are actually utilized to create some important stuff for us it can be either food products and it can also be related to pharmaceutical products which we are going to talk about in this chapter so in nutshell in biotechnology we are going to utilize the metabolic pathways of microorganisms for preparation of certain extremely important products for us now what are the five basic units of this subjects you must consider and take it into a uh, note that in this particular subject we are not going to have any practical sessions it is tt as you can see in the subject code it is 505 tt all the sessions are theoretical so the five basic units of these sessions are as you can see on the slide it will be introductory then we are going to talk about immunity which is a very hot topic right now uh, you must have heard about herd immunity that is how we can actually cope up with the current pandemic situations we are going to talk about that then the most interesting aspect that is genetic engineering and microbial genetics then we are also going to throw some light on mutation and last but not the least we'll be talking about fermentation we are going to begin our session with the topic of fermentation now in fermentation these are some of the important parts from which gto has asked questions in previous years that is what are the equipments in which fermentation will be actually carried out what are the different kinds of media which are used for preparation of fermented products then what are the antibiotics different categories of antibiotics which are prepared by fermentation technique and what are the blood and related products which can be actually prepared by fermentation technique so in nutshell we'll be focusing on these four aspects of fermentation so let's begin with what actually is fermentation 
Now, fermentation is a very broad term and it is considered a subgroup of biochemistry and biotechnology. Now, in fermentation technique, we will be utilizing the metabolic pathways of microorganisms so that it can bring about certain changes in the organic materials which will be acting as a substrate with the help of microorganisms. So, what do we have right now? We will be having certain organic substrates that is initial compounds. Microorganisms are going to live on those compounds and they will be producing something out of that organic compound with the help of enzymes which are actually present in those microorganisms. So I think now you are getting it. So fermentation means we are going to use microorganisms to prepare certain compounds out of the original substrates. The best example that we know is brewing industry that is alcohol based industry and second is the baking industry in which fermentation is actually widely explored as far as food department is concerned. Now to actually work in a fermentation industry or actually to study how fermentation is carried out we need to study about what is an important equipment in which fermentation is actually carried out. You need a vessel in which fermentation will be carried out. So that is the most important aspect. Now this vessel will be providing all the important situations or parameters in which microorganisms needs to grow. Now imagine guys, you are having a tank in which you have added the substrates that is the organic material you are adding the microorganisms which are going to grow on those substrates and they are going to prepare something out of it now imagine a situation in which microorganisms actually die in between they are killed in between without producing any possible or important products so that is not like that is something which is not acceptable so everything inside that chamber or fermenter should be capable to promote growth of microorganisms throughout the fermentation procedure which is carried out you get it so a fermenter will be designed in such a way so that it is going to promote the growth of microorganisms throughout the cycle of preparation of fermented products it depends on the kind of fermented product that we are preparing Say for example, if we are preparing certain antibiotics, you must be knowing penicillin. Penicillin is a fermented product. Penicillin is a fermented antibiotic. So that depends on the type of product that we are preparing, that how long the cycle is going to continue. But till that time duration, microorganisms should not die. And an ideal fermenter should have at least these five parts, which is listed on the slide. Let's have a look at each and every important part which are going to be installed inside a fermenter. Fermenter will be having a tank essentially, there will be a tank and in that tank how many important parts should be there. So first of all you need an agitator. Imagine you are having a tank in which you have added substrates. These substrates are going to convert into a product with the help of microorganisms. Now, say for example, this cycle is going to continue for 14 days. One for, that is a long time. Now, for 14 days, you need to repeatedly mix your substrates and microorganisms so that they do not lose the contact. Now, this particular department is handled by agitator. As you can see, the agitator is a kind of mixing element which is going to provide aeration and it is going to provide the mixing to the organic substrates and the microorganisms at regular intervals. Now, uh, the size of this agitator, how, I mean, what should be the dimension of this agitator that depends obviously on the size of the tank. It is usually one half or one third the size of the tank that you have actually used. Now, you can have more than one agitators. If the fermenter is huge enough, you will be installing obviously more than one agitator so that you cannot have any dead spaces. 
Now, if you remember mixing chapter in semester two, pharmaceutical engineering, we have talked about it. What is a dead space? Dead space is a location inside the fermenter where mixing is not carried out. Okay, so agitator will be providing the mixing between the organic substrates and the microorganisms. The next part is baffles. Now, sometimes it happens that agitator alone is not able to provide that much mixing to the um, organic substrates and the microorganisms. So we need to add something to the agitator and that is a baffle. Baffle is a kind of metallic strip which is attached to the wall of the fermenter. Again, the size of a baffle is usually that depends on the kind of fermenter that you are using. But as you can see on the slide, it is one tenth the diameter of the vessel. So baffle is essentially a metallic strip which is added inside the fermenter to improve the mixing efficiency. Also, there is one more word which you need to remember and that is vortexing. Now, this word was also there in pharmaceutical engineering mixing chapter. Imagine uh, in your fermenter, mixing is going on. The organic substrates, um, the all the essential liquids, the microorganisms are actually revolved inside the uh, fermenter for quite long. Now, after some time, what will happen? There will be um, vacuum creation in the center and there will be like uh, certain areas where mixing is not actually taking place. Now, this particular situation is known as vortexing. To avoid that circular movements, continuous circular movements in which mixing is also not taking place, we need to add baffles. I'll show you the diagrammatic representation and then it will get more clear to you that what is an agitator and what is a baffle. Moral of the story, both of them work for mixing of the organic substrates and the microorganisms. Next is sparger. Sparger is again, it is very important part. Uh, now, there are actually two types of microorganisms. You will be learning about this in microbiology. First is aerobic and second is anaerobic. Those microorganisms which require continuous supply of oxygen and air are known as aerobic microorganisms. So imagine that you are using aerobic microorganisms for preparation of the fermented product. Then obviously you need to continuously supply oxygen and air inside that chamber because that fermenter will be tightly closed. It will be a vessel and it will be closed at the top. Now, what do we do about the continuous supply of oxygen and air inside the chamber? You need to uh, supply that with the help of a sparger. Now, there are basically three types of spargers. First is porous, second is orifice and third is a nozzle. Porous is the most effective one. You will be having a pipeline which will be connected to the um, inside of the fermenter and in that pipeline there will be n number of holes now through these holes air and oxygen will be continuously bubbled inside the fermenter and so that microorganisms can utilize the, utilize them throughout the um, cycle second is you can have an orifice or the nozzle you can have a pipeline and at the um, end point of that pipeline only you can have a a whole kind of thing and through which oxygen or air will be supplied uh, that is quite evident and that goes without saying so how this condition or how these spargers work they actually provide oxygen and air inside the chamber of the fermenter then we are having two another uh, parts that is sampling points and drain points now uh, you know that for this particular product you need to keep the fermenter for 14 days say for example but you need to check periodically what is the uh, status of the uh, product inside the fermenter it, it is not decaying and whether the oxygen supply is proper or not whether the ph is proper or not whether the temperature is proper or not now this is known as sampling points so you need to have a sampling point inside the fermenter through which it can be checked periodically and to assess the status of the conditions inside the chamber. And then you can have drain points. Now there are chances that microorganisms may die inside the fermenter after a certain time duration. Not all of them, but some of them. And when they die, they have exodus. They have dead body parts. 
Now you need to remove them. If they keep on circulating inside the chamber, then it can create hurdles in their fermentation technique. So you need to remove them periodically and that is what we call as drain points. Now, along with these basic elements of a fermenter, you need to have these supporting systems. And these are the supporting systems which provide temperature control, then foam control. What is foam? There will be a lot of frothing inside the fermenter after a certain time duration when microorganisms keep on metabolizing with the help of their enzymes and keep on converting the product to the final, I mean, category. Now, uh, they, that leads to a lot of frothing inside the chamber and that needs to be controlled with a foam controlling device. There will be computer systems as well so that everything is automated and there should be minimal manual interaction because this everything is a sterile product. So, right, remember, we will be having labs in microbiology where everything will be white. Okay, so. Uh, these are kind of sterile systems so as much as possible pharmaceutical industries try to keep everything in automated mode okay and manual interactions should be minimum then there will be alarm and fail safety systems to check if anything goes wrong how do we control it so this is a diagrammatic representation of how uh, the chamber will look like as you can see, there will be a chamber made up of stainless steel. There will be agitator. Agitator will be constituted of two important parts, the shaft and the impellers. Shaft is the rod and it will be connected to a motor which is rotated at a specific RPM depending on the kind of product that you want. Then there will be metallic strips connected to the inside of the chamber and that is your baffle which is going to control vortex and which is going to help in the mixing of the organic materials with the microorganisms and there will be um, uh, drain points and sampling points at regular intervals to assess uh, how far the process has gone and everything. Now this particular question is actually asked for 5 marks in GTO where you need to list all the important parts of an ideal fermenter along with the diagrammatic representation that I have shown you in the previous slide. So these are the three uh, uh, topics that we discussed today. What is biotechnology? Biotechnology means we are going to utilize microorganisms to prepare something, some important stuff for us for food industry and pharma industry. Then what is fermentation? Fermentation again, we'll be using the enzymatic or metabolic pathways of microorganisms to prepare uh, some important antibiotics and even vitamins sometimes. We'll be discussing about that, what all we are going to prepare. And then again, we talked about what are the ideal parts of an fermenter, what should be controlled and what is the most important aspect and along with the diagrammatic representations. So in GTU, the third portion which is given in the slide that is parts of an fermenter with diagrammatic representation it is asked. So that's all for our first session. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please you are free to suggest us if you want any changes. This entire content of lecture or video lecture rather is concise because we have limitations of time, how much uh, amount of material we can actually upload on our YouTube channel. But you will be given detailed notes of these topics by your mentorship groups and still you are free to contact us anytime if you want to have any reference material or reference books, etc. Thank you so much. Stay home. Stay safe. Thank <laughs> you.